Hello everyone and welcome to this week's quick tip plugin tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to upgrade your plugin to support multi-frame rendering or MFR for the newest 2022 version of After Effects. By default, if your plugin hasn't already been updated for this, when you open your plugin in CC 2022, you'll have this uh, little error or message that says the effect may slow down preview and export as it's not optimized for multi-frame rendering. So we're gonna be looking at the first basic way you can upgrade your plugin to automatically support this and basically have multiple of your CPU cores rendering multiple frames at once, making your plugin much faster. Now this will be the first of two videos in this sort of series. This one will be the basics of how to upgrade your plugin to MFR, but there's also some cases if your plugin uses things like sequence data or a pre-rendering sequence data and things like that, which requires a bit more complex uh, coding, which we'll go over in a future tutorial. But before we get started with this video, I do wanna remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly in the channel. And down in the description, you can uh, check out all of the links to GitHub, follow us there for coding updates, AE scripts you can follow and buy or download free products there to help support us, as well as Instagram, follow us there for live updates. If you're not already a member of our Discord server, make sure you come and join get help with scripting extensions after effects premiere uxp plugins submit tutorial ideas hang out with knowledgeable members and much more and if you'd like to help support us on youtube you can become a member supporter premium supporter or vip uh, get cool perks like code in advance weekly live streams uh, access to advanced polls and much more and as a quick reminder again check out my AE script stuff you can download free and paid plugins i'm always adding more to help improve your workflows so step one in upgrading your plugin to multi-frame rendering, you need to make sure you have the newest SDK version. If you're using an old version, say version 15 or 17.1, you wanna make sure you download the newest version in order to support multi-frame rendering. Um, and then after that, you basically just have to include this out flag. We're basically going to add this flag to our global setup. So I'm going to open up the skeleton project in my newly downloaded most up-to-date SDK and inside of our global setup we're going to add an out flag. Now in this case it's an out flag 2 so we actually need to say out data out flags 2 is equal to out flag 2 supports threaded rendering. If you had a previous other out flag this actually needs to be out flag 2. If you had a different out flag let's go ahead and pull up some examples uh, let's say I use timecode. We were using that one for some reason. If you already had this one uh, inserted in here, you would just need to add this vertical character. And this is like adding multiple of these together. And then you can go on and add more out flag twos if you wanted to. But in this case, with the skeleton project, we just needed to add this supports threaded rendering. And as the guide says, you do need the March 2021 SDK or later which is basically going to be the newest version available as of the filming of this video and for months to come. And the only exception to what I'm showing you now is if your plugin uses sequence setup, sequence resetup, or any of these uh, sequence set down type things. This is when your plugin is setting up data that really only needs to be initialized or set up once and then is accessible throughout the rest of the lifetime of the plugin. So if you do use sequence setup or any of these things to deal with sequence data for your plugin, you will need to learn something called the compute cache, which is something I'm in the process of learning and will go over in a future more advanced tutorial for this of greater length. But in order, if we just have a normal plugin, which in our case is just doing simple pixel manipulation or something like that, we just need to add in the out flags of our global setup PF out flag 2 supports threaded rendering. And as you know, when you update your out flags, you also need to update in your resources, your R file. You have your global out flags and your global out flags too. Currently our second out flags, because it was previously empty, uh, it doesn't have this updated information for our supported rendering. So what we're gonna do is make sure we have a debugging set up and we're going to make sure we debug inside of After Effects. So I'll select uh, After Effects 2022 as my debugging directory. Go ahead and make sure we have a breakpoint set here for our out flag and we'll run this. Make sure we're in debug mode. And looks like we have a simple error we need to fix here. So whenever you get this Windows ignore packing mismatch, you can either do what it says and like write it in your header file or in our properties, we can go ahead and find where 
our information is encoded here. We have our struct member alignment will set to default. And we'll go ahead and try and build that. Perfect. We just had to change the uh, struct there. To make sure it was set to default. Now we can go ahead and run this and hit our breakpoint and get our updated uh, hexadecimal display for our new out flags. So we'll just quickly, we can actually just create a new layer or new comp and a new layer. In our sample, go to skeleton. And now you can see we have our breakpoint set here on our out flags. If we go ahead and right click on it, and we want to change to a hexadecimal display. And since it's just going to be our threaded rendering, let's go ahead and actually jump forward here to this return. Our out flags value is now this. So we have this hexadecimal value. Go ahead and turn this back to normal if we want. As you can see, when it's not hex, it's just a bunch of numbers. But now when we update that inside of our global out flags too, we just have this extra eight here. Um, I can actually click on continue. And you can see here we have MFR is not supported yet. And it's also not a 32 or 16 bit effect. You'll also get a warning for that. Uh, we can now go ahead and update this and it will go ahead and work with multi-frame rendering. We can create a composition in a layer, apply our sample plugin skeleton. We don't need our uh, breakpoint anymore. And now you can see we still have this, but we're actually supporting now multi-frame rendering by adding that simple global out flag. One way you can verify this is that by looking here at our concurrent frames while we're rent we're basically running a preview, you can see I have multiple concurrent frames loading with my skeleton plugin applied. And as a quick example, if I apply something that doesn't support multi-frame rendering, you might still get concurrent frames rendering with your plugin, but it's not going to be optimized and you're also going to get this error message in any version that's above 2022. So just to quickly sum up, all we need to do is add this outflag 2 supports threaded rendering to your global outflags 2, update your R file with the updated hexadecimal display once you add this new flag, and you're basically set to run with multi-frame render support. Again, if you use something more complicated for your plugin, like uh, using sequence data, uh, using a lot of the callbacks like sequence setup and sequence resetup and sequence setdown, you will need to look into compute catch compute cache for multi-frame rendering, which I'll be going over in a future video. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how you update your plugin to support multi-frame rendering. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow me on GitHub for coding updates, Instagram for other live updates, as well as follow on AE scripts. Check out some of the plugins and scripts I make on there, which will help your workflow. If you're not already a member of the Discord server, you can come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, After Effects, Premiere plugins, UXP plugins, and much more. And if you'd like to help support us on YouTube and get cool perks, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP, get cool perks like uh, Discord status, code in advance, and much more. Thanks again for watching everyone, we'll see you next time.